Hi everyone, my name is Hussain and in this video we are going to talk about the gatekeeper pattern. Gatekeeper pattern comes under security category of cloud design patterns and it's all about adding additional layer of security to reduce the attack surface on the backend services. And related pattern to the gatekeeper pattern is valid key pattern. Hopefully we are going to make a video about it in future. Now let's go to the examples to help us understand gatekeeper pattern better. Let's say that our system is built on microservices architecture and we have hosted in, in some Azure serverless components like Azure App Service or Functions App or Logic Apps. All of these are considered to be the application layer of our system. Then we are storing the structured data in SQL database and the unstructured data in blob storage. Then we will have to have some kind of communication between the application layer and the data layer. Then we will have external clients that want to interact with our system. And obviously they are going to do so by interacting with our services in the application layer. Let's say that this is the URL of the functions app that the external clients is going to interact with. So far we have done everything correct. We have functions app that's exposed to external clients through HTTPS. Remember when we said this pattern is about adding additional layer of security that might be required in some situations. Now, let's talk about some of these situations that might require you to add additional layer of security in front of your application layer services. First, the challenge is when the external clients want to compromise our functions app to have indirect access to the database to manipulate our data. Second challenge, maybe we want to implement OAuth authentication between the application layer services and the external client. Everyone knows that OAuth authentication is the best practice. However, it's out of the scope of this particular function app. The main purpose of this function app is to implement a small business logic and update some data in the database. And if we are going to go ahead and implement OAuth authentication in this particular function app, we are going to add more complexity to our function app. What's more, we might have hundreds of these functions app in our system. Then we will have to go ahead and add OAuth implementation in all of them, which is going to be a huge amount of effort. Finally, let's say that we want to protect our application layer services from public internet accessibility. So we are going to go ahead and add it in internal VNet. Then we will have to build a VPN connection between the external clients and the internal VNet. Although we have secured the application layer services by placing it in an internal VNet, the external clients still able to communicate with the application layer services using their endpoint. And if they succeeded to compromise it, they will have indirect access to our data store. And what we want to do is to protect or not to share the endpoints of the backend functions with the external clients. Those are the different scenarios or challenges that might require you to think about adding additional layer of security in front of your application layer services. Now we have talked about all of these challenges. Let's see how can we use the gatekeeper pattern to resolve these problems. Now let's say that we are going to add additional layer of security. And in this case, I'm going to add API management. So the external clients are going to send requests to the API management. And then the API management is going to interact with the application layer services. At that point, the external clients will know nothing about the endpoints of the application layer services. All the external clients will be able to know is the URLs that are hosted in the API management. At that point, we have achieved a level of security by hiding the endpoints of the application layer services behind the API management, we have achieved some level of security to our system that should be appreciated. In addition to other security features that's going to be added by using API management. Most importantly is OAuth authentication. 
we are able to implement OAuth authentication at the API management level. So we have a consistent experience between the external customer and the API management, and we are assured that we are not duplicating our efforts for having OAuth authentication across all of our Azure functions. So this is the key of the pattern, having additional layer of security in front of the application layer services. So far, we have described the pattern at a high level, but I'm interested to go a little bit into the implementation of the API management to show you exactly how the API management will help you to secure your application layer services. So this is my Azure API management. As you can see here, it's split into backend and frontend. This is going to be exactly the same if you are using AWS API Gateway. It has the same split into backend and frontend. The backend is going to be linked to the application layer services. And in our example, it's going to be linked to the functions app. While the front end will have a new endpoint that's going to be shared with the external customer so they can interact with the API management. At all times, the endpoint of the backend services are going to be hidden from the external clients, and they are never going to be shared with the external consumer. As we talked about the functions app example, let's consider another one. Let's assume that we have implemented a custom web service and we hosted it in Azure App Service. And then of course, we are going to have a different URL in the API management for the external customers to use so they can access this new app service. But unlike Functions App, when we implement a custom web service, API management is going to reveal more information about the backend service to the customer. As you can see here, in the response that the API management is going to send to the customer is going to send the API, the ASP.NET version and the platform, and what's worse, the URL or the endpoint of the backend service. Let's see how can we use the API management to protect this information. What we can do is to implement a policy that's going to delete these particular headers from the response. So the response that the API management is going to send will going to delete these two headers. But we still have the endpoint of the backend service that we still need to handle. And what we can do is to mask URLs in the content. So we ending up sending back to the customer the URL of the API management instead of the endpoint of the backend service. This was a quick overview of the transformation policies in the API management. If you are interested to learn more about it, I will put a link to my video so you can check it. If you know nothing about API management and interesting to learn more about it, I will put another link to the API management course I put on YouTube as well. Now let's take it one step further. And let's say that we want to use application gateway, sometimes known as WAF, Web Application Firewall, into our solution. Web Application Firewall or the Application Gateway is going to protect our solution against some common security attacks like SQL injection, cross-site scripting, and other attacks. So we are going to make the external customers send their requests to the Application Gateway. And then the Application Gateway is going to route these requests to the API management. Both of them, the API management and the application gateway provides different security lenses. The API management is going to provide the OAuth authentication and different policies we have talked about before. While the application gateway protects us against common attacks like SQL injection or cross-site scripting. And if you are interested to learn how you can set up the application gateway with the API management, I'm going to put a link to my video so you can review it later. Now you get the idea of this pattern, adding as many security layers as you like to protect your system. This is what the gatekeeper pattern is about. Now we have talked about the design and implementation of this pattern. Now let's talk about some considerations you need to keep in mind when you use this pattern. First of all, you want to make sure that the endpoints for the backend services are protected endpoints. What does it mean is that when we introduced the application gateway into our solution, 
you want to make sure that the external clients are not able to go ahead and connect with the API management directly, bypassing this layer that we have added. Same thing, you want to make sure that the external clients are not able to connect with the backend services directly as well. And to achieve this, you need to place these resources in an internal VNet and make sure that they are only accepted traffic from a valid source. So the backend services are going to accept the traffic coming only from the API management. And same thing for the API management is going to accept the traffic only coming from the application gateway. Then we have a common security principle that we need to apply the minimum security privilege for our gatekeeper, as well as we shouldn't implement any business logic to our gatekeeper. Then we get to the SSL offloading. SSL offloading means that we have encrypted communication between the external clients and the API management, and at a certain point, we do the SSL offloading at the API management to continue the traffic using HTTP only. We do this for some reasons to improve the performance of the internal system communications. However, in some situations, you might have a requirements to apply end-to-end -end encryption for your solution. In this case, you need to do the SSL offloading at the database layer and having all the traffic, external traffic and internal system traffic all encrypted using HTTPS or SSL. Then we're coming to latency. As you are adding more layers to our solution, you should expect a little bit more latency to the overall performance of your system. And then finally, when we have one API management, we are introducing a single point of failure to our system. And you can overcome this by having a multiple instances of your API management, either in the same region or in different regions. Now let's see when you should be using this pattern. When your application handles sensitive information, you want to make sure that you are adding additional layers of security to protect your application layer services. Also when you have distributed applications that you want to perform request validations separately from the main tasks. As we said before, in this situation here, the API management is going to handle the OAuth authentication as well as different transformation policies, and the application gateway is going to handle the common security uh, defenses against common attacks like SQL injection or cross-site scripting. Both of these has been handled separately away from the application layer services. Now we are coming to the end of this video. I hope now it's clear for you what the gatekeeper pattern is about, how to design it in your solution, how to implement it in some Azure services, when you should use it, when you shouldn't, and what considerations you need to keep in mind when you use this pattern. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you have any questions, please put it in the comments below. Thanks for watching.